I have had a bit of a day today, so if you'll excuse me, I'm going to shut off my brain and cast some very large colorless creatures for your entertainment. Hello folks, Phil Gallagher aka Thraben you here for another legacy video and Michael H gave me a dealer's choice donation deck list and I'm gonna cash this one in today to just like ancient tomb into large creatures and just just get people dead. Um, this was a deck list from the Netherlands that I found. Uh, it was from a small event so don't uh, don't get too excited if you're a you know Eldrazi stan out there. But many years ago, Eldrazi were actually one of the more broken things that you could be doing in Legacy. As a turn one Eldrazi mimic into a turn two Thought Knot Seer, attack for four, followed by, you know, maybe attacks for eight or more the following turn was really good. Now we live in a format where Thought Knot Seer costs zero mana, and then you reanimate it and do it again. And grief has kind of pushed these sorts of things out of this world. And some of the other colorless utility lands like Urza Saga that have been printed in the last few years have made playing lands like Eldrazi Temple or Eye of Ugin a little bit less attractive. But the game plan here today is real simple. We are going to use Chalice and Thorn of Amethyst to get ourselves out of the early game and then cast large creatures like Thought Not Seer and Reality Smasher to get our opponents dead. Eternal Scourge is a relatively strong thing to be doing versus white removal in particular as you can play it from exile, and Endless One is a scaling threat that can allow us to kind of pump all of our extra mana into it. Sideboard is relatively clean and simple, it knows what it wants to fight, we have some card draw for games that are going to go a little bit longer, we can pithing needle specific problem cards like maybe some utility lands or planeswalkers, We've got Jitte for fair matchups and Torpor Orb for Thassa's Oracle decks with a lot of splash damage in other places such as Name Sticker Goblin. Uh, there's two more Wastelands that don't quite fit on the screen here, but we have a lot of mana including a couple of Spirit Guides to go just a touch faster and a little bit of utility squeezed in the main deck with, with Unlicensed Hearse being an honorary Eldrazi for this league. So, um... Big creatures go burr, let's battle, and if you decide you like any of the cards you see today, please consider checking out toamagic.com, that's Tales of Adventure, they're great. If you want to place an order from one place instead of getting a whole bunch of envelopes from different places, check them out and use promo code THRABENU when you do to save 5% on your order. Plus they've got like a bunch of duels and power, so like if you're looking for the good stuff, they've got the hookup. Let's battle. This is a bit of an awkward hand. So I can do turn 2 uncounterable Eldrazi, and then not turn 3 Eldrazi, or I can do turn 2 counterable Eldrazi into turn 3 this. This is not like exactly what I want my opening hand to look like, but I'm not really sure if I should throw it back, having played 0 games with Eldrazi in like 2 years. I think I'm just going to throw it back. Oh god, this hand's so much better. Undo percent keep. Uh, we'll pitch the dismember here, I think. Opponent's going to 5, which almost certainly means that I lead on Ancient Tomb into Thorn rather than uh, going aggro with Eldrazi Mimic. Things that have happened to me today. <laughs> Stopped a fight? That was a thing? Then I, I think I stepped on a, like, cat's claw and cut my foot open. And separately cat-related, my cat also ended up at the vet today, unfortunately. So just all in all... Not a strong day. Ooh, that is probably real good. My luck's turning around. Bloodstain Mire, most commonly played in like a black red reanimator deck, but this could certainly be other things. Ooh, what does that mean? Uh, we'll double Eldrazi Mimic here and then attack my opponent for 10 next turn. Feels like my opponent is probably a. Cheaty creature deck of some kind. If it's show and tell, this is usually a blue fetch land. This could be black, Stompy. Well, we'll get some information here. Is this one of my bullshit decks? It's possible that this is something that I played. When did my 
black red bombardiers video come out and was i playing these cards is this a weird painter start that's probably what this is this is probably painter and the red represents chaos defiler okay i think we figured it out or maybe agatha's soul cauldron painter hybrid combo yeah that's that's reasonable i guess eldrazi mimic is like not going to be the best in the world of bowmasters um if i play this i lose city i can save two life but i may end up just paying that life in a different way in the future that's probably fine there's not all that many non eldrazi spells in my deck at this point and bringer is a three ish turn clock walking ballista can do things or blocking it i can ping and kill a walking ballista if my opponent doesn't grow it yeah okay i think my analysis was correct because i have to worry about my opponent just hard casting a chaos defiler okay yeah agatha's soul cauldron uh so this can potentially go infinite in a little while so with agatha's soul cauldron in play this is no longer going to kill walking ballista immediately uh, let's see what's going on over there in hand. Well, I will take a Goblin Engineer. We have the Illusion of Choice. So Endbringer gets untapped on my opponent's turn, so I can use its activated ability there. So my opponent's at 8. Yep. So now I can ping my opponent's face if they want, if, if I want, or I can draw a card. This is just instantly kill me with Phyrexian Devourer. I haven't played against this very much seems like it right they just activate agatha's soul cauldron exile that it goes here then walking ballista gains this ability but only the activated ability uh yeah so i believe i am just dead <clears throat> sure. yeah but my opponent is just going to repeatedly do this until they can deal 16 to my face and my endbringer does not stop this if i leave up the endbringer I can't actually successfully ping and kill the walking ballista ever. Not in a meaningful way anyway. Alright, um, I'm just gonna concede. Like I can I can see that I am dead. Jitte seems reasonable to kill small creatures. Pithing Needle seems reasonable as well. Chalice of the Void and Thorn are not very good here as a whole. Do I torpor orb for the tutors? Or do I just like play something fair like the One Ring? I guess I could play Leyline of the Void. I'm not like excited about it. I think it's better than this stuff. So I start with Leyline. I can play Eldrazi, Mimic, and Endless One for three on turn one. That's like not that bad. The issue is that like both of these are then locked in my hand. Like is five power on turn one good enough? Probably. Especially considering how many soul lands are actually in this deck. I can also just like play Eldrazi Mimic and Endless One for two on turn one. If I want. And then save this for Smasher, which I think is just what I'm going to do. We are the beatdown. What you got over there? Three mana turn one for something. Magus of the Moon. It's annoying. It is currently unclear how good that actually is. That uh, will very obviously attack both of these into Magus of the Moon forever. My opponent's at 14. Uh, I will play a Cavern of Souls here. And then pass the turn. A frustrating thing about Magus of the Moon in particular is that Magus shuts off the actual factual colored symbols here. Because it has to be colorless mana. It can't just be generic mana. So the cards in my hand aren't very strong right now. Did you keep a one lender that just Magus of the Moons? That is wild if so. Yeah, they did. All right. Everyone's favorite thing, dependencies. Urborg is a mountain. And Google dependencies if you want to know why. No. My opponent goes to 12. I don't think Endless One solos this game. But if my opponent doesn't have any more mana, I don't know that that matters. Like, I am going to win this fight and eventually make my opponent hold back their Magus. 
And when they eventually block, like, I will start playing Endbringers and Reality Smashers. I can also just, like, top deck a Jete or whatever and break the game open that way. All right, so now my opponent can cast spells. Yeah, so this is exiled with Agatha's Soul Cauldron specifically. I guess they can take things out of my graveyard and scale up their creature. That's fine. That means that this doesn't go all the way anymore. Uh, so we're unfortunately chilling for a while. Third land drop into Fable. At this point, I'm starting to fall behind. I do not have colored mana. This looting is presumably pretty good for my opponent. Yeah, they gave them the opportunity to junk an engineer that wasn't otherwise doing anything. The Goblin Shaman attack gives my opponent access to black mana for something like Chaos Defiler. <clears throat> A walking ballista, sure. My opponent can kill that, attack me for five. That's pretty good. I think I should be at three lower life, though. I think the Magus probably should have attacked last turn. I'm at 11. I think if I don't have a relevant draw this turn, I'm just dead. Uh, yeah. So I take five, go to one. And then there's two bodies on board. Uh, that's sort of unfortunate. But so it goes. Can't be mad. Today's video is sponsored by TopDeck.gg. They're an awesome company that runs an awesome tournament series. If you would like to play for prizes such as Time Twister, check out the Top Deck Championship Series. It's run using their patented Command Tower software, which is awesome for EDH events, although you can use it for anything. Your players can scan QR codes and then get real-time standings and seamless pairings for their event. If you're looking to step up your local tournament game, check them out. Okay, I'm looking at a double thorn hand that I can't immediately cast. I play this on turn two. I'm just like not excited about this. Whereas I am excited about this. This is totally fine. Versus Flooded Strand. These are likely to be reasonable Magic the Gathering TM cards. Force Pitching Force. Beans? No. <laughs> Fuck my unlicensed hearse, I guess. Okay. Well, good news is, this little, little eternal Eldrazi bud right here, he's like super eternal. Because like, if it dies or is exiled, I just get to cast it again. The bad news is that like, I am probably playing against like rest in peace helm slash energy field combo, and I don't know that I can reasonably interact with that if my opponent just plays the second piece here. Oh, that's good. That's real good. Let's take out white here. No floating mana. Just acceptance of fate. There is a cycle. Sure, sure, sure. Uh. So to do this on x equals 2, I would need infinite mana. Got it. I think we just do this. I think it's just time to get the clock in play. No white mana? I do basically have that infinite mana that I was talking about. 15. Yeah, I think I don't want to lose the top deck to energy field. I think this is the rare instance of the chalice on two. That costs six mana. Oh, -ho. opponent values that as important. Very understandably. Oh, um, that's good. That's real good. Send it. 11. Pass. I am going to start ticking this up towards 2. There. So now we've got some stuff to do. In case rest in peace energy field happens. When it's at 8. Play a mimic. Opponent dies next turn some portion of the time. Leave this at 2. Uh, cool. Totally do that. That is a very expensive brainstorm. Then I've got this attack for five. I imagine that we're good from here. We are. So we're not so much with uh, interaction for rest in peace and energy field. Is it like that one blast zone? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Cool. One ring reasonable. Pithing Needle presumably stops Helm and some other planeswalkers, maybe um, Shark Typhoon. I want to, at the very least, replace Unlicensed Hearse. That's just not going to be good. 
I don't know whether or not my opponent is playing something like Triumph of St. Catherine. Just members a good answer to that, if yes. I'm going to cut one of those for this. And I think I'm going to start with all of these in the board. There's certainly some awkwardness in playing like the One Ring alongside Thorn of Amethyst. I think my hand is mediocre but capable. And we're hoping to be able to just wasteland my opponent's turn one land. If they fetch an island, like, so be it. But the goal is to play turn two Thorn, followed by Thought Not Seer into Reality Smasher. And if everything goes to shit, I just play the One Ring and uh, work towards drawing Blossom. Ooh, um, we'll lead on Eldrazi Temple here. That's a wastelandable land that we'll probably just take out immediately. I don't think we Pithing Needle until we know what to Pithing Needle. Doorkeeper Thrall. Uh, sure. Uh, we'll take out that Tundra. Makes my Thought Not Seer worse, but, like, it's still a 4-4. I guess when it leaves the battlefield, my opponent will still draw a card. I guess that's ever so slightly awkward, but probably fine. Let's just continue to make my opponent's life awkward for a while. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, I'm thinking. They potentially have like a force or something. But it's in play. No fetch to shuffle. No triumph immediately. The opponent likes the vast majority of the things that they have access to. Sure. That's a prismatic ending, and notably with how prismatic ending interacts with Thorn of Amethyst and Thalia type stuff, my opponent doesn't realistically have to pay the extra mana. So here I can just like jam a Reality Smasher if I would like, but I'm not sure that I would like. I think I just do this, and this still makes two mana. So I think I will go ahead and just play a 4-4. Like, it's good value for my opponent to remove this, but like, I've got threats and I've made my opponent's mana more awkward, so I think I'm okay with the position that I'm overall in. Uh, yep, that's fine. Yeah, so we have stranded a lot of stuff of some kind in my opponent's hand. Now I just kind of start doing gross things. I think I just play the Endbringer this turn. Yeah. I don't think I need to Pithing Needle yet. I don't really know what to needle. And I don't think I just want to, like, shot in the dark name something like Lorien Revealed. It's another Swords, which is fine. And this damage from Doorkeeper Thrall is borderline irrelevant. I'm always doing this and attacking. Whether or not I play an endless one for x equals 4 immediately is another thing. I think since I just have the one ring here, I do just go ahead and... S oh, fuck, I could have done it for 5. I'm an idiot. Is fine. We'll pretend I'm playing around days. That's how we can sleep at night. That is an energy field that my opponent has just flooped into play. Okay, so this is my opportunity to 100% just resolve the one ring, uh, which I'm A-OK -okay with, and we'll start drawing. Um, that's not particularly good right now, but like my opponent can't fetch, they can't cantrip, they can't cast a removal spell, can't cycle a Lorien revealed. So this is hopefully ultimately going to be fine. Yeah. Let's do three mana, do one of those. I think at this point... Um, actually, my life is kind of valuable. Uh, let's just pass the turn. Yeah, so that can't fetch. It is technically mana because of Urborg, though. Sure. Uh, this is fine. This chalice is very good. So, like, I just cast this on two, and then my opponent can't resolve a rest in peace to turn this into a hard lock. That seems good. I think I'm not going to play the Eldrazi Mimic first, as weird as that is. And if my opponent counters this, energy field goes to the graveyard, and I attack for 9. Alright, I'm in play. I don't exactly know what my opponent's game plan from here is. But I'm kind of okay with the way this game is progressing. Uh, so let's Temple. I think I draw 5 next turn. Big card. And then I'll just, like, discard some stuff. I can discard an Eye of Ugin, discard a Mimic. I won't miss those. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, my opponent also can't discard a Blood Moon. Sure. I'll take some damage. 
Wasteland would have gotten rid of a fetch land if not for that Blood Moon. That is ever so slightly annoying timing. All right. Play a land. I think play a new one ring at this point. Just replace that old one. I have the Blast Zone now. Uh, discard a land. Discard a land. Discard a Mimic. Discard one of you. Oh, I guess the Blast Zone doesn't get rid of Energy Field anymore because of Blood Moon. Uh, we'll figure that out. Lose some life. I just got more copies of the One Ring coming. Yaw. Uh, yaw. Yaw. I guess I don't get to cast these ones anymore. So I guess let's do this and set the counters to zero. And just be good with that. Discard this. I really just kind of want more copies of like Chalice of the Void and Thorn of Amethyst. Also, I guess like why has my opponent not been attacking me with Doorkeeper Thrall? Have I had protection every single turn from the One Ring? I imagine the answer is no. All right, the energy field is broken. Mountain. Opponent can't play a new energy field because of this. Okay. I'm getting attacked now, sure. Got it. We'll lose zero here. Giant Endless One is a common. So this attacks my opponent down to one. The Force of Will is off the table. This feels like it's worth three mana. We'll just put this on Helm so my opponent can't do some sort of backdoor win, I think. All right, Helm of Obedience is off. Block, remove, still dead. I don't think I play the extra creature. I think I want to respect like a land drop supreme verdict. All right, we win. I don't feel good about it. This match did not bring me joy. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and honestly, they're just the best at what they do. If you need to keep your deck lists online, this is the way to do it. They have all sorts of different viewing options. You can condense that text if you like things to be tight. You can make them visual grids. You can put them in stacks. You've got all sorts of different ways to kind of view and visualize your deck lists. And they also have some really cool functionality, like allowing you to see playtest hands and even fully playtest your decks. So check them out. I've kept this hand, fully hoping that Wasteland is good against this opponent. Non-basic. Damn it. So I guess I am leading on Eldrazi Temple into Mimic instead, to not just telegraph the whole Wasteland plan. No fetch. Give me a land. Um, that's a land. But like, I want to blow up your land. I'm only getting in for two this turn instead of three. 18. I think I'm going to play Wasteland and pass. I don't think I want to give my opponent the opportunity to do something like end of turn brainstorm or surveil land or whatever. Double basic, absolute daggers, bowmasters, kills, mimic. Uh, so many things that are in the metagame right now are just like randomly hostile towards my deck in a way that I'm not the biggest fan of. I can play around days, or I can not take two damage, and I'm going to choose to not take two damage and try to drop this. All right, we're in play. And bringers a bit later on are pretty cool. Um, but we're a little way away from those still. I guess I can do it next turn. Uh, so we'll do this. It's a little unfortunate if my opponent has another Bowmaster, but if I had another Bowmaster, they potentially would have just, like, pushed one more point of damage on their turn, but it's not like that's a guaranteed thing. No mana usage. Uh, sure, that's fine. That's a shuffle. That's what I want to see. Yeah, I'm fine taking this damage. Ooh. So what does my opponent have? Like, Merktide Grief, Reanimate, Force of Will... Those are the sorts of things that are over there. Since I can Endbringer two turns in a row, maybe I just do that and I like feed the first one to a Force of Will or whatever. Hoping that the second one actually resolves. I don't think I just get to like sit here and play super patiently with Chalice. Because like I do just have to fear my opponent playing another threat. Uh, yeah, that's fine and expected. It's force pitching force, which means the Endbringer next turn is pretty likely to actually resolve. 
And if I play Endbringer, that helps a lot with something like Merktide Regent. If I draw another land, I can potentially like Endbringer and Wasteland Underground Sea too. It is a Swamp Cycle into Animate Dead. Sure. That brings me to 12, which is effectively 10. Well, this is resolving. Yeah. Eldrazi Mimic is big. Go to Punchies. Punchies for five. Opponents at eight. I can lock down Troll for one mana. Uh, yeah, that's fine. That was something that I deduced was pretty likely to be over there. I've lost my Mimic. Sure. So that troll kills me the next time it hits me. Huh. Is playing Dismember better than just playing another creature? I don't think so. I think we're doing this. Can I guess grow the Mimic? I'm not attacking with it. I'm going to ping and take out the Orc first. And then I can take out the Bowmaster on my opponent's turn. And I still have blocks available. One colorless, right? Yeah. So I'll be at three. I guess I'm dead to a removal spell. Maybe that's a reason to dismember. Overplay the extra body. I like this deck has a lot of removal, though. Right. So now I'm dead, right? Because I didn't play around that. I can stop this from attacking. Yeah. Rats. One next draw. Dead card. Followed by effectively dead card. But we did not have gas for a long time. Uh, even if I do some Endbringer nonsense uh, without another creature on top, I'm just not going to get there. Um, Jitte seems reasonable. I could do some graveyard hate if I wanted. I think I'm not a super fan of Chalice. <clears throat> Let's Jitte for fair creatures. And I think I'll do Cage to fill the remaining two slots, but I don't think I am going to Leyline. I don't think Leyline makes sense when my opponent can just reanimate my large creatures. Uh, this is not super exciting here. I'm just going to mulligan this. Yikes. Um, no? <laughs> this is also a no, but I'm on five cards, so that probably begrudgingly becomes a yes. This plus this is the way that I hope to win this game, so I guess I'm putting back Smasher. Um, yeah, but this does this does not feel good, especially since like I can't technically like Jitte equip with the lands that I do have. Well, that does it. I don't think I wait a turn to play this creature. It gets a little annoying if this gets countered, but I would like to cast the Jitte next turn and equip the following turn. And I don't think waiting to play Cavern is good. Delta to the bin. I'm going to get dazed and my opponent will be able to surveil again. It's not the surveil land immediately this time. Awkward. I don't want to show this and get this waste landed before it actually makes something uncounterable though. So here we are. In play. Troll cycle, I imagine. Oh, white mana. What does that mean? More white mana? Uh, sure. Alright. Do I bother wastelanding my opponent? Go with yes. Take out the blue mana. And then make a large, uncounterable card. By wastelanding, I can't play a Reality Smasher off the top anymore, which, like, definitely matters. I guess this is also a 4-4 versus a potentially reanimated 5-5 five five roll, or 6-5. Depends on whether or not it's an animate dead or a reanimate. Reanimate. Awkward 4-4s four are awkward. I think I'm just playing them and planning on going wide. Like, And this very much disincentivizes the troll attack. If I sit with the Endless One in hand and then just get, like, Wastelanded off Eye of Ugin, it goes from being a very real card to nothing very quickly. Whoa. Very much was not expecting that. Sure. I must imagine that this means my opponent has one or more removal spells. 
and they are comfortable just like trading six damage for four damage. Send them. Yes, that is what's happening. This is eight. But I have a two turn clock to their three turn clock. Ugh, that's what I thought the white was for. That's very unfortunate. Was that random or was that pondered? That was a shuffle off that ponder that was random. Brutal. I get attacked for 11 of my 12. I can then jitte. It's not really good enough. Dismember's not really good enough. We are dead. Assuming no interaction from my opponent, we have Mimic into Double Thought Not Seer into Reality Smasher, probably to finish things off. Uh, we don't want to see Wasteland on the other side of the battlefield. Sure. All right. Be something in the ant ballpark, in which case we have the slightly wrong sort of hand. Force of will, though. Yeah, I was starting to think Echo of Aeons for like refueling. It's gonna be like a day's undoing. It's a Karn the Great Creator. All right. Are you just gonna get liquid metal coating and blow up my lens? There could also be something like the one ring that my opponent is considering. That is an LED. Sure. So we'll play a creature and pass. Is there a crack in response? There is not. There is an ensnaring bridge. That's really hard to beat in game one. Like, I can technically beat it with Endbringer pings. I don't th think I'm going to play it out. This thing needle good. I could do some graveyard hate here. My dismembers probably aren't great. On license hearse, probably usually doesn't do what I want it to do. Plus, it's just an artifact. We'll pithing needle for Karn, and maybe cut some random creature to play a playset of Leyline of the Void. Something like that's fine. Uh, so I can chalice on zero on turn one followed by Thorn of Amethyst on turn two, and then follow up with threats from there. This is fine. Alice on zero. Good enough for the Force of Will. Um, given how mana is probably going to work out this game, we'll just play this as a 2-2 beater here. Uh, that's fine. What is that? Bowmasters? Okay, sure. With that draw, this turn got a lot harder. If opponent doesn't have that many cards left, I should probably just Thought Not Seer them. It's tough to say if this is, like, fully better than Thorn. Because sometimes my opponent just has, like, okay, Hull Breacher and Days Undoing and Echoing Truth. Am I fine if my opponent refuels if I Thorn? I don't really know that I am. I think I'm going to take the Days Undoing. Sure. This is going to go on Eldrazi. And then I think I just... Crash in for what I assume is going to be 9 damage and try to leave my opponent dead next turn. We'll see. They could Echoing Truth to draw a card with Thought Knots here. All right, they're at 6. Uh, that's fine. I think there's one unknown card before draw step. And a day's undoing ends the turn. Sure. I just have lethal damage on board, so there has to be a bounce spell or another flash creature here. Send it. All right. Uh, sure. So the Hull Breacher is dead. I might just lose this land randomly, so I think I'll just play this out. And we'll recast this. Sure. Do we have, like, a Karn Ensnaring Bridge? Uh, Narset's fine. There's an Echo. That's fine. I have two different lethal threats in play. Sure. It's land drop. All Breacher's fine. There's an Echo. My opponent does not get the treasures because they control both Narset and Hull Breacher. And the Narset is preventing any additional draws. So at this point, I think my opponent needs at least three pieces of artifact mana. Uh, that's one of them. It needs two more initial artifact mana sources to do like Karn into go off, or Karn into bridge. Sure. So, oh, there was a Karn in hand. How many of these things are in exile, by the way? 
three. All right. Now Chalice is not bad. Uh, we're just sending that face here. Uh, Bowmasters. Sure. Alrighty. This puts my opponent to one. Got it. I just put this on zero to stop future artifact mana. I can't put it on anything that stops uh, Karn. Force of Will doesn't get this. Force of Will does get this. Kind of. Uh, sure. So now I know Bowmasters is a thing. So I can consider leading in Dismembers. When I'm on the draw, they're also kind of nice versus Hull Breacher, I guess. Just get rid of, like, Endbringer. Endbringer is a way to, like, win through Bridge. I could leave those and just trim a couple of Mimics. I could also choose not to Leyline. This is fine. Uh, turn 0, Leyline. Turn 1, Thorn. Followed by a Mimic. And I can hold up Dismember as well. That's about as good as it's going to get. All right, my opponent's on six. We'll see how much they can accomplish on their first turn. Bowmasters, got it. Um, I could Eye of Ugin to double creature here. I think that's just bad into Bowmasters, though. Uh, so the thing that beats me is second bow... Oh, nope. I thought it was going to be just second Bowmasters into a wheel. I think I just hold up a dis... Oh, no, I can't really easily hold up a dismember here, huh? Okay. All right. Yeah, it's just, like, super awkward to do so. I can hold it up after this turn. Sure. Uh, that's fine. Cool. Eldrazi? It's like an awkward amount of life. <laughs> I just have weird lands for this. Since this can't produce a colored mana to pay the additional tax here. Uh, force pitching an echo. My opponent has no cards left. I will happily offer a tree. Uh, do I? Do I attack for six. My opponent's at 11. It's weird because of this and this. I think I'm going to stay the beat down, though. All right. All right, there is the concession. Um, I won, but I sure don't feel good about <laughs> this deck. All right, um, final round. I'm on the play. This hand is not overly exciting. I think I'm going to try to be a little bit more aggressive when I'm on the play. Uh, this is perfectly fine and good. I think I'm just going to get rid of one of the threats here. I'm always casting a lock piece on turn one. I think I'm actually going to go with Thorn over Chalice. I'm not sure if that's right. I can't articulate why it feels right, but it feels right. Sure. I'll attempt to play an Endless One probably for four next turn. Make it larger than Lightning Bolt. Rough. <clears throat> yeah, if I want to try to curve into Endless One properly, like that's the way to do it. Um, we drew a Mimic off the top. The Endless One is not on track to be bigger than Lightning Bolt. We'll see whether or not that matters. It does matter. Um, but given that I want to use mana on future turns on Chalice of the Void, I'd probably do this. Uh, that's fine. Opponent opted not to daze as returning the land is pretty costly right now. Additional Wastelands or Merktide Regents are going to be the things that are going to be very scary for me this game. Fuck. All right. A good portion of my deck is mana. Like, that's the good news. So there's a redraw. Yikes. Two. Opponent's at 15. I think I am at a massive disadvantage here. Oh, it's Rug. Uh, that's horrifying. That means my Chalice is much worse. Yikes. Uh, Triple Wasteland does this. I'm not fully dead or anything, but I do not expect to win this game anymore. Like this Questing Druid is just going to get bigger than my stuff. Oh, and a Bolt? Sure. Uh, yeah, I did not get time to deploy this Chalice. Uh, the Thorn of Amethyst making like the Force of Wills and Force of Negations and stuff more awkward is like definitely a thing. I think I do this one. I, I think I would just like to attempt to take whatever gas is remaining in my opponent's hand, try to fog this attack for three, and then resolve a chalice. All right, cool. All right. 
I can do this like this. This will be dazable, but does not cost me life, and I think the life is the big deal here. All right, am I willing to attack with Thought Knots here? Like, am I willing to trade damage for damage? Is that favorable? There's land instant artifact. There's no sorcery or creature over there. I think I'm going to crash in. I think this is one of those times that the longer this game goes, the worse I am at winning. So I think I just go in and hope to kill my opponent. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I would love to just spike a Reality Smasher off the top and win this one. I can play another Chalice on one. That plays around some of the Brazen Borrower type stuff. It's a little weird if my opponent's last card is like a Daze and I just let them Surveil. Yeah. So now my opponent attacks for 5, I am at 4. Or they can attack for 4 with a Chump Block, that's perfectly reasonable as well. They do, they're still dead to Reality Smasher, which is kind of my out here. Alright, what do we got? Cavern. This forces me to leave this back. Uh, that's no good. And then any cantrip or whatever that scales this up, I think effectively wins the game for my opponent. Not literally, but effectively. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So now the chump is obligatory. My opponent draws a card, and I need Reality Smasher off the top. Well... <laughs> The awkward thing is that I need Colorless Mana, so I do have to tap Ancient Tomb. So I'm going to go to 1. Uh, I guess my opponent just blocks here, right? And then they're not dead. Alright, show me that you can block. Uh, that's unfortunate. Margins on this game were super tight. Alright, I'll concede. Rug Delver. Mm, Jute's okay. Pissing Needle on Wasteland is a thing that I am legally allowed to do. One ring can fog if that's a thing that I want to do. I think I'm just going to play the Jittes. I don't know that I'm going to Pithing Needle on Wasteland. I think I'm going to cut two Chalices or two Thorns. I don't know. Like, neither the Thorns or Chalices are particularly good. And, like, playing Chalice while bringing in Pithing Needle is, like, kind of weird. My Thorns... Are those better? It stops DRC. That's relevant. This is much better versus, like, the counter magic and stuff. Uh, no. This has no gas. Is this reasonable? Turn 1, Cavern, Pithing Needle on Wasteland. Turn 2, 3-3, three, three, that's uncounterable. And another 3-3 three, three or larger creature that's uncounterable. Maybe this is fine. I just get rid of the Thorn and keep the Hearse. Um, yeah, this, this feels awkward. All right. Cavern on Eldrazi, attempt Pithing Needle on Wasteland. Uh, that's a success. And no aggressive creature from my opponent on turn one, which is great. Under Shuffles, also good for me. Um, I think we're just doing this one this turn. The Spirit Guide might be used to play this to help keep my opponent's graveyard in check rather than just funneling mana into Endless One. Because the easiest way for me to lose is just a large evasive flyer that gets out of control. I have a little bit more time to answer something like a... What is it? Questing Druid? Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, that's the, that's the sort of thing that I would like to get rid of. Ooh. I'll go ahead and attack for my three first. Because there might be some fighting on this turn. 16. Always play this. I think I'm just going to jam this this turn. And I can pay for a daze with a sneaky simian spirit, or sorry, elvish spirit guide. But I, I think it's just very hard for me to lose from this position if I keep DRC and Marktide in check. Pay. Um, so we will immediately start taking things out of the graveyard. And I've got a good sized endless one next turn. For sure, sure. Ah, uh, Wasteland gets surveilled. Pithing Needle did something confirmed. Now my opponent can potentially just overpower the hearse and, like, surveil enough stuff in there that a Merktide Regent is still castable. All right, it's coming in. 19. Oh. Yeah, so I thought we were going to be doing kind of a cute um, Endless One dance here. Wrong. We're just putting my opponent on a two-turn clock. 
Yeah. Uh, so I think this next one is for whether or not we end up positive in this league. All right, so Chalice versus Thorn. How do I feel about the game where I'm on the draw? Both are much, much, much worse. Maybe Chalice is better here. Again, we've got like Chalice pithing needle problem versus like creature coming down ahead of Thorn and just making Thorn kind of a relevant problem. Um, mana doesn't work with this hand. Uh, I guess. I think I don't want to be wastelanding my opponent. I think I value my mana sources quite a bit here. This is not really enough gas. All right, do I dismember that? Yeah, it's real awkward if it doesn't resolve. To keep Hearst competitive, though, I think I have to go for it this turn. All right. But, like, this is an incredible daze or a good force of will. Yeah, but, like, I, I think, in theory, I want to attempt to clear the Delver and then Hearst so that a Merktide Regent or a DRC doesn't become a problem. So my opponent gets to stack these so that they get a good chance at flipping the Delver after seeing the card from the Bobble. It doesn't flip. I'm afraid of both Wastelands and Creatures. All right. So if I want to race this Delver, I probably play Mimic and hope to top deck. If I want to keep other cards from, like Merktide from becoming relevant, I do Hearse. I think I'm already losing the game to this Delver, assuming this Delver flips, so I think I am mimicking immediately. I'll do this off an Iowug in, in hopes that if my opponent uh, wastelands, they wasteland the eye. All right. Delver flips to Daze, which my opponent is happy to draw. Pop that out. Um, yeah, but this Delver is so fast of a clock right now. That's almost good. All right, I'll attack for my two. And now we can Urborg play Hearse. And we play around days this way. And I am just going to eat some stuff from Graveyard now. Raw card count for Merktide matters here. Although, again, I think the Delver is just going to solo me. Do owe me. Uh, two, four, five, six. Uncounterable. Okay. Eldrazi. This is uncounterable. An attempt to Eldrazi mimic hit for five. Yes. I guess we're also attacking with Hearse, right? Because it's just, just going to untap anyway. Weird. Attacking with Hearse was not on my bingo card here. I am dead to Delver Flip plus Lightning Bolt. So this untaps. No Delver flip. I take three in the air, go to six. Still dead to Delver plus Lightning Bolt. I just get one more turn. I guess Endbringer can maybe solo this game. Just like ping. Two mana prevent from attacking. All right, one damage. Put this on Eldrazi. Attack. Opponent's at seven. All pass turn. I'll eat with Unlicensed Hearse in upkeep. Again, just physically trying to keep a Merktide Regent from coming into play. In case my opponent is randomly running Stifle, I probably just activate this ability right now. One colorless to do so. All right. Sure. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I just activate this next turn if I don't wasteland. Chump block is obligatory here or trade here. I could crew and attack with this or five, six, seven. I think I just want to leave this up though. Send it. All right, that is a trade. So now I will just continue to eat here, play wasteland and pass. Guess I'm going to wasteland still. Like, if my opponent cracks a fetch, and Bringer just pings them and kills them now. This is, like, very good mana denial. I, I literally don't believe that we went positive in this league. So, ten years ago, or whenever these cards were printed, it's somewhere in that ballpark now, the Eldrazi were, like, this unstoppable menace that were tearing up tournaments in both Legacy and Modern. 
And now we're reduced to this. Um, Mimic dying to Bowmasters, I, I think, like, that alone just makes the deck Stone Cold unplayable. Like, this deck is not keeping up with the power level of the format anymore. You know, we, we need more very powerful colorless creatures or specifically more Eldrazi to kind of work with these Cavern of Souls and Eye of Ugin synergies. It kind of felt like I was scraping the barrel on playables this league. I think this is just one of those, like, revisit the archetype when it gets new cards. Like, we we worked pretty hard for some of these wins. Um, I think I could have played a little tighter. I think I played sloppy at a handful of points throughout this league. Um, but it <laughs> it felt like an uphill battle. And being a colorless deck, I don't have the luxury of a lot of the, like, Boseju, Ottawara type lands that often give you flexible answers to things like ensnaring bridge that immediately threaten to lock you out of a game. This league, this league did not bring me joy. I was expecting this to be kind of fun, but to like lose quite a bit. And we ended up winning, but it was not fun. So opposite of what I expected. I don't know if I have any major ways to like make the deck better. Like you can switch the utility lands that are in the deck list. You can muck with some of those numbers a little bit. But ultimately, I, I think I'm just not excited about the strategy right now. Uh, if you have any thoughts, let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear them. Folks, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day. And if you need any magic cards, check out toamagic.com and use promo code THREBANU to let them know that I sent you. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day. See ya.